Hey guys. This is Donnie. And for you all that's new here and part of our family, this is Standing Goats Rescue. I've got an encounter I've been sitting on for a while. I haven't had time to, to do it. Today we've been preparing for the storm that's coming. It was supposed to have been here early tonight and now it's showing that it's gonna be here in the morning, early, between three o'clock and five o'clock. And they're having a lot of tornadoes in this one, so hopefully we don't get it again. Give me a few minutes, I'm just gonna walk back here and figure out where I'm wanting to set up. It is really creepy in here right now. I'm back, I'm a fair distance from the car and the furthest I've ever been on this particular trail is right up here. come from this one I was just in here a few weeks ago I... yeah right up here is uh, the last time I came in here this was my stopping point you guys that have been following me, you'll recognize um, this tree, or this group of trees, right here. I've been up here twice, and both times I've had some type of activity. I don't know if you guys remember how bizarre this looked. There's four trees right here, and they're all rested on top of each other. It's neat, it's really neat. They're dead now. These are, um, I'm sorry, th these are short needle pines or sand pine. And when they die, they're extremely brittle. And for them to get broke like this and like that, these trees were alive when they were broke. Um, <clears throat> shale on that limb. I mean, they just, they don't bend. They're really, really brittle. They're pretty brittle when they're green, but right here in front of this, this is the furthest I've ever been is right here. And the last time I came out here, the reason I stopped is because I was hearing, uh, I was hearing noises up ahead that really made me uncomfortable. I don't know what they were. It wasn't a typical animal noise. I have no idea. There is a road, uh, a dirt road, back that way, about a, probably three eighths of a mile and they're logging further that direction. I don't know if they're gonna log this, I doubt it. These trees are still young. So where I'm at right now, this is new to me. There's a lot of trees that are, that are bent. I don't know if you guys can see that on camera. There's a lot of trees right over there that are bent, there's two. Is that a fox? No, that's a gopher turtle hole. Let's see if I can get it where you guys can see it. If you could tell, it's flat on the bottom and rounded at the top. That's from a gopher turtle. Uh, they are protected. There's another tree right out there. Just laid, laid across some limbs. Very strange. This area gives me the creeps. I 
the wind starting to blow from the storm. Look at all these trees. I got these, uh, let me go around these briars. I'll get to the encounter in a minute. I just, I didn't. It's getting late in the afternoon. Looks like somebody was attempting to build something. You see the the limbs they got, they drug in here. Probably kids. Um, there's no houses anywhere uh, for many miles from where I'm at, but this is a horse trail. And it's, um, I think it's uh, almost 30 miles long. Kim went on it one time before. Well, that would be a showstopper for a horse. But they ride this trail quite often. Um, I got trees down. I really got the creeps. Um, something is. I'm just nervous. It's getting late in the afternoon. It ain't long. It's gonna get dark. It's really. There's a tree across the trail here. There's another one there. There's another. One. There's three more that I can see. Guys, on the last video, uh, that first video I filmed with a new camera. I had there was a handful of you that said that I needed to zoom. Though this is a GoPro, it doesn't have a zoom function. Uh, it's got, it has a, a four time zoom. Look at all the tree split. It looks like a place an animal could bed up. Um, what I was getting at, there's, I don't have a way that I can zoom. It's like a little area you can get up underneath that and get out of the weather. The trees are making all kind of noise from the wind blowing it. that was all right guys I'm, I'm not gonna go any further I'm really getting scared did y'all hear the clicking just then not the trees uh, squeaking it was a clacking noise it almost sounded like uh, rocks being clacked together that's trees. That's uh, the trees shaking there. I'm hearing movement, and it's not in the treetops. It's down low. I am armed. That's movement, if you guys can hear it. All right, I'm not going to go no further. This really scares me. All right, let me get the camera set up somewhere right here. I wanna um, do this kind of quick. I had to fix um, a lot of punctuation in this one. It was quite difficult to read. Uh, there wasn't punctuation in it. It was like super long sentences. They had four or five periods and there's uh, a hundred or better sentences and just a very few periods. I'm sorry, I keep seeing stuff. My eyes are messing with me. All right, let me find somewhere right here. We'll get set up. And I've got a, I've got another microphone. My dear sister Judith, she's part of our family here. 
she sent me a, a really nice wireless wireless microphone. I mean, it is absolutely amazing. And what's so crazy is this the one that uh, uh, that I've been wanting. That's the one I was wanting to save up for. And I didn't I didn't know that they had the one that she sent me has two uh, transmitters in one receiver. And I didn't know they even made that. So when I, these people that are coming in this spring and summer, when I do the interviews with them, I'll be able to put a microphone on me and them and get back away from the camera without wires. That is amazing. I'm so thankful. God bless her. I love her to death. Judith has been just so good to us and my family. Just an absolutely phenomenal human being. Guys, stand by just a minute. I think I'm going to set up right here. I'm just trying to find somewhere that I can see. I've got a lot of noises coming from um, from that direction and back. Well, I can't see over there now. Back in there. And I keep hearing something back over here. But I think it may be wind. Maybe. I wish I had a zoom right now just to show you guys straight. I'm trying to see if I could see it on this screen. Okay, right through there. I thought it was a, it's like a man standing there. Dark, dark brown, but I, I think, I believe it's a stump. About a six foot stump. It's not moving. I don't see any features on it. And it's probably 75 yards from me. I don't think it's moving. I'm gonna keep my eye on that. Cause that, I just, it stands out. Yeah, this, I don't like this area. Okay guys, stand by for a minute, please. All right, guys. Sorry about that. I was just checking the microphone. All right, this is the first time I'm using this microphone, and it's in this little one-by-one -one pocket. There are some crazy noises going on around me. But uh, right through there is where that figure is that I've seen looks like a man. I'm going to uh, pull this up. I want you guys to hear this encounter. I'm going to make it quick so I can get out of here. I'm, you can hear the the logging trucks. I, I haven't heard a vehicle at all. I haven't heard anything until uh, as far as man-made vehicles until just now. Right when I'm recording. But this happened in Alabama. And I don't have the details of a uh, city or anything. But here we go. He said, here's my encounter that happened a couple of years ago in the northern part of Alabama. I went on an outing in a wilderness area that has several miles of hiking trails. I took the red trail this time since it was the only trail system I haven't hiked. The trails are marked with colored signposts according to the difficulty of the trail. The red trail is the most challenging and isn't for the novice or intermediate hikers. I spent several years in the mountainous regions of Afghanistan during my active duty tours, so I consider myself advanced in hiking and climbing. Three hours on the trail, three hours on the trail, I came to a junction where the left path went straight up towards the peak and the other continued east. I chose the left and headed to the peak. 45 minutes up the path, I heard a loud crack of a tree falling behind me. I estimated that it was near the junction of the trail, so I continued forward. I 
I don't know if this microphone's picking that up or not. Within a few minutes, I heard another tree fall, then another and another, all falling in the same area as the first. Panicked, I thought I was about to fall victim to a landslide, so I began running to the peak. Covering a hundred yards or better, I had to stop to catch my breath. I bent over and placed my hands on my knees, trying to get my breathing under control. Then from somewhere behind me came a very intense roar that literally hit me so hard that it almost knocked me back. I froze in confusion, which quickly escalated into pure fear. Immediately, I went back to my military days in the Middle East, specifically to the conversations we had with our platoon leader regarding the giants who lived in the caves of the Rocky Mountainsides. I'm sorry guys, I just want to face that way. I got a bad feeling over there. Um, they are cannibals who roar like F-16s during full acceleration, he said. My thoughts went to, were they real? Am I about to become lunch for a red-headed giant? My heart jumped into hyper-warp and I felt darkness filling my vision as I began to black out. I knew my family needed me for their survival, financially and physically. Then I forced myself through that doorway of fight or flight. From the intensity of the roar, I was heavily surpassed in strength and mass. My pissant pea shooter was obviously useless here, so my only option was, fight, was flight. So my only option was flight. I thought, I thought that I had completely forgotten all of the training I went through for preparation of battle. But the instant I was overcome with fear, it flooded back to me. I had seconds to react as this monster was leveling the forest downhill of my position. The hiking path is where it was. The hiking path is where it was at. The distance between us shortening quickly needing to put distance between us. I broke off trail in a perpendicular direction until there were a couple of hundred yards between it and me. I know you guys heard that. Um, turning to the bottom of the mountainside, I ran for my life. I had put some distance between the two of us before I was forced to stop. A large outcropping, a large outcropping stood between me and my car. A 20-foot sheer drop halted my escape. The thunderous sounds of the destruction behind me ceased. It was dead silent, and I mean it was silent as in zero sounds of anything. Time was not on my side, neither was luck. Now I had two choices, jump off this edge and surely break my legs and back, or turn and head directly towards the nightmare I was so desperately trying to escape. I slowly crept toward the path where the destruction began, hoping not to step on anything that would give up my position. At the trail, there were three or four trees laid across the trail forming a roadblock seven to eight feet in height. These were saplings, but six to eight inch, these weren't saplings, but six to eight inch thick trees that were broken off, not sawn. I walked as slowly as possible, focusing on the growth of my surroundings. I wanted to have eyes on my attacker. The trailhead and parking area is a heavy gravel. No way to walk across it without the crunching of the stone. When my foot fell upon the gravel, I stopped and scanned the hillside behind me, knowing that I just gave up my position. 70 to 80 feet up the slope stood the perpetrator, and I will carry that memory for all time. 
not the gray-skinned, red-haired giants we were warned about so many years ago, but a sparsely, sparsely? I don't know if that is even a word. I should have researched that. I didn't even see it. I'm sorry. Uh, but a sparsely hair-covered man around eight and a half to nine feet in height. I didn't see the, in the intense anger that my mind concocted in his face. I saw a worn down old man with weathered skin full of wrinkles and deep set eyes of sadness. He looked very lonely to me. That sounds humorous, I know, but my eyes did not deceive me that day or any others. I knew the second I laid eyes on him that this was the mysterious Bigfoot that I heard so many tales about. I do think that I formed a bond with him that day. Don't put it in your mind that I spend any time searching for him though. That day an event happened that ended my outdoor life in the forest. I have never faced fear like I faced on that day. Bigfoot allowed me to leave the mountain unharmed. I will not gamble on my life and I stay out of Bigfoot's home which is the woods and forest of the earth. Mankind is a frail creature. We do not have the natural build to survive the outdoors, especially when there are massive hair-covered men out there that are well suited for that environment. I am just overly thankful that he allowed me to leave the mountain that day. I don't think it would. I don't think it would be so if I had continued to go further up the mountain trail. I retreated and he allowed me to. End of story. And then he, um, he kind of closes out here. He says, uh, if this encounter makes it to YouTube, I prefer that you do use my name. I found your channel through a few buddies who I told of my encounter and laughs is and laughs is always the response. My wife and my wife and children are the only humans who have taken me seriously and they are the only ones who matter to me. Maybe my buddies will hear about my encounter on your your YouTube channel and start believing that I shared a truthful experience with them. Thanks for the safe place to unload these horrible experiences. My family and I will always have your back. And he signs off, Halston Killinger, a.k.a. Smokey. Guys, that, um, that was emailed to me a few weeks ago, and I have not had time or the opportunity to, uh, to do that encounter. I'm going to move up here. I'm sorry, let me take this off. It's going to be loud. Please bear with me. I just want to get out of this spot. I'm hearing a lot of stuff around me that's really scaring me. It don't take much to scare an old man. Um, it's starting to get dark on me a lot quicker than I expected. <sighs> um, all right, here comes... There's a logging truck, but maybe... It, Maybe that's what the sound come from. Most of the stuff is down there, what I'm hearing. But guys, anyway, um, thank you, um, Hoss, if I pronounced your name right. I apologize if not. Um, Smokey, thank you for sending that in to us. You know, we don't laugh at people who've had encounters. A large portion of our family here has had encounters. And it's not anything to laugh at, especially if you're the one that's witnessed it. I hope I can make it back to the car before you start. Quite, quite scared. If you ever had a feeling that there were people all around you, staring at you, or, you know, that sensation being watched. Here comes a helicopter. Okay. I'm going to get out of here. Guys, I'm going to stop this. 
God bless you. Y'all have a wonderful afternoon. I've got to really, I got to make tracks. I got to get out of here. I'm, I'm very scared and I got a ways to go. I love you guys. God bless you. I will definitely be seeing y'all soon. I'm almost caught up. Please keep praying for me and my family. We need all the help we can get right now. And I will definitely be seeing you guys sometime very soon. So until that time, be safe.